Thanks so much for joining us. I am Jeff Reinholtz once again today. This is MSP Insights. And today I'm on location with Justin Copey at the Innovative Office right here in Rochester, New York. Justin, thanks for joining us. Yeah, buddy. Thanks for uh, having us on the show, man. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. So focus it today is I want to be able to share your journey with our audience. I think the unique piece is you and I have had uh, the luxury of spending what better part of two and a half years working together yeah. as someone that's been in an MSP, but you've grown up in the MSP. And when I talk I about growing up in the MSP, I think you've got a very fresh perspective because you're a Rochester guy. Grows up in Rochester. Yep. Goes to one of the best technology schools in the country, totally. Rochester Institute of Technology. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you land at a place at the time called Innovative Solutions. Right. You step in. Today, would you share a little bit about your journey from this kid from Rochester, this sure. dreamer, this entrepreneur, the sales guy of yeah. salesman, who now is CEO? Would you share <laughs> sure, a little bit man. about that. Sure, man. It's all been right. uh, it's been a hell of a ride, no question. Had incredible people around me throughout this journey so far. Hope to continue to do so, obviously, going forward. But um, it, was, uh, it was early 2003, and uh, I was at RIT. I was going to school for my information technology degree. I was running this little side hustle. I called it Rent-A-Geek. Uh, okay. I was taking like ads out of the penny saver for $40 a, a week. And basically, I would go to people's houses, and I would fix their computers using the skills that I was learning you know, at a very baseline level uh, while, I was, while I was in school at RIT. And uh, so I'm hustling, doing my thing. And m my whole deal was if I couldn't fix a customer's problem, I wouldn't charge them. Hmm. So it was this really no risk offer to anybody who needed help with their personal computer. And back then, there weren't a lot of resources to, to help you if you were a novice. And there were a lot of people that just didn't know how to use a computer. And I loved it. Um, at the same time, I, I had a, a, another job that I was doing telemarketing, um, outbound cold calling, selling okay. uh, Verizon Internet uh, Services, DSL. And uh, I was calling customers around the country, follow the sun type of thing. I was calling customers at 9 p.m. Eastern time uh, in Hawaii. And, and I loved it. I absolutely loved helping a customer understand maybe something that they didn't know prior okay. and guiding them through a decision-making process. And, uh, I decided to minor in marketing when I was at RIT, and uh, I applied for this job here at Innovative Solutions um, doing cold calling, really business development. And uh, I remember I, I got the call after four or five interviews, and they told me I didn't get the job. Uh, week goes by, I'm bummed out, but I'm like, ah, I'll, I'll end up somewhere. And uh, they called me back, and they said, listen, you were the number two guy. The first person that we chose, she decided to take a job at Paychex after accepting our offer. So if you're interested, we'd love to have you on board. I'm like, yeah, I, I would love to join the company. This will be great. This will be awesome. I mean, I don't care if I'm the number two guy, number three guy, low man on the totem pole, so to speak. So I come into Innovative, and uh, in six months, I call thousands of businesses around town, Rochester, New York, little Rochester, New York, yep. Western New York. Nobody had ever heard of our company. We were about 19, 20 employees. And, uh, and I was like, just totally in love with meeting new customers, helping them understand that there was this company in town that could help them with their technology needs. And if there was a need, uh, positioning resources accordingly to, to be able to do that. And see, at that time, you know, the business was very different. Um, okay. Innovative Solutions was a traditional uh, software development shop, but we were also a quasi-managed services company. We didn't call it managed services back then. Okay. Um, but we knew that as customer needs increased in the small to mid-sized business space, which is really where we focused, that um, we would have to start to choose kind of what we were going to be good at. Um, and the company started in 1989. So from 89 to 2003, it was really, let's take whatever customers would come our way. And it, and it, was, uh, it, was, it was really a matter of, um, of, of really being reactive. Okay. So, uh, you know, Fast forward another three or four years later, we've attracted now maybe 100 new customers, and um, I'm the only salesperson on the team. The company's about 30 employees, and, uh, and it was evident that building a real managed services practice was important for our business. So we did that. Um, we also doubled down on our software development capability, put real project management in place, and, um, and the rest was really history from there. I mean, we. We evolved several times through that journey. We thought we could get into enterprise and start serving enterprise customers. We learned real quick how difficult that is. And, yep. uh, much love and respect to anybody or any business that supports the enterprise. <laughs> uh, and uh, by the, it was probably 2010, 2011, I started to get the itch to, um, 
I don't know, consider doing something bigger. And so I went to the owners of the company. I said, listen, I've been helping build this business. Uh, I'd like to become an owner or I'd like you to support me in my ambitions to maybe go elsewhere. I was thinking maybe I'd go to Microsoft, maybe I'd go work for a big company. Well, I, uh, I ended up staying with the company and I went through a five year succession planning process um, at the time with, uh, with our CEO, his name's Bob Titus and a uh, great mentor, uh, somebody who I just absolutely respect and, um, and appreciate for, for everything that he did for me. And I remember Bob telling me, listen, you're not ready to buy the company, this is 2010. He's like, we, we got a lot of work to do. And, and he was right. I, uh, I, needed, um, I needed life to happen to me. Mm. I needed uh, to gain some more self-awareness, a lot of self-awareness. I needed to understand the value of building culture and how important that is as you're building a business and uh, you surround yourself with people that really care about what you care about. Mm -hmm. um, I needed to mature in, in how I responded to people leaving the company. You know, I think that's something that business owners, you know, they're, they're not necessarily prepared for when they come into the business. When, when you invest so much of your time and energy and money into developing your employees and they decide to leave, mm. uh, to go on to bigger and better things. Um, you know, today I, I celebrate that. Um, I didn't always celebrate that. I used to take that very personally. And you know, these are some of the things that I needed to really learn uh, through that succession planning process and um, continue to build on today. Uh, but in 2015, I was fortunate enough to be able to go through a buyout process, um, bought the company 100% uh, and uh, haven't looked back. We, um, we've certainly evolved over that time, but uh, it's been one hell of a ride, man. So if we had a little bit of a rewind there, because I think it's yeah, a really it. fascinating story is, number one, you come in in what, 2010, you have the self-awareness to go, here's where we are, here's what I'm hearing. Yep. And your gut and voice of customers telling you, Mr. Salesperson, leading team, growth, right? Yep. Looking at 100 customers, we need to pivot. We need to make some updates. Already the voice is, is yeah. keeping you up at night, right? Yep. Here's where we need to go. Thinking about those moments from leaning in with your mentor, mm -hmm. who's telling you, we think you're ready, we don't think you're ready. Here's when we think you're going to be ready. Yep. Then you get to the moment now where the mentor says, it's your time. Yeah. This is yours. Talk to us a little bit about how difficult it could be, though, while you're still working with former leaders, sure, former owners, yeah. and taking over a business now that you've, you've been feet on the street. Yeah. You, you've had voice a customer. You've worked with the customer saying, here's what we want. Mm -hmm. Go make this happen. Where you've got an entrenched methodology, right, with, with former owners that are saying, but Justin, here's how you're going to do it. You're yeah. crazy to go to that direction. How did you navigate that? Because I think that's a really big moment where you've got someone's eyes that are always going, he's got a great intuitive ability to look mm -hmm. to where we need to go, but I don't know as if we're ready yet as a business. How totally. do you navigate that? Yeah, you know, um, I always thought if you had a vision and you wanted to go in a direction and let's say you owned the business or you were leading that business, you just come in one day and you just tell everybody that's what you're going to do. And um, that's just not reality. I mean, yeah. you could, you can stand in front of your entire company and tell them that the sky is red tomorrow and doesn't mean anybody's going to believe you. Right. You know? um, it's extremely difficult when you come into a situation like the one uh, perhaps that, that I went through where the company was a 30-year-old company. It was uh, at this point in 2018 where we needed to make a major decision on what we were going to do within our business. As everybody knows, if you look back to 2010, 2012, 2015, and then ultimately to today, um, the evolution of cloud-based technology has been this freight train that has moved through this industry uh, without anyone, without anyone being spared. I mean, this is a massive, massive force. And today we sit in the middle of this perfect storm of so many things happening and we're seeing so many businesses uh, be able to thrive because of it. But uh, it's, it's easy to forget that in 2010, when we were thinking, all right, every customer is gonna ultimately move to the cloud at some point. I mean, this is 10 years ago, yep. we, were, we were saying that. I remember in 2012, we ran a, cam a marketing campaign um, that we were really proud of the fact that we moved a customer to the cloud every single day. 
And a lot of that was in backup and recovery, messaging okay. and collaboration, leveraging tools from Datto and others um, to, to help customers ultimately leverage that. But it was a very different thing uh, to say to a customer, we're gonna move your entire infrastructure to the cloud. Um, and so by 2015, it was, it was so crystal clear to me watching other businesses in our industry, um, watching large enterprises uh, take major, major steps forward, uh, no, no longer investing in data center technology, for instance. Yep. It was very, very clear to me that uh, if we were to read the tea leaves, so to speak, yep. we needed to pivot, we needed to make this move. And um, as you alluded to, and, and you know, uh, me coming into the business and just saying, we're gonna move and pivot our entire business to the cloud was, um, was no easy feat. Right. We had people that had built their, number one, their careers in on-prem technology. Yep. So first and foremost, I have an employee base that is skilled for an on-prem world, not necessarily a cloud-based world. Secondly, I had uh, prior owners in the business that had devoted their life, their life to this company and to bringing it to where it was. And to walk into a room and explain to them that we needed to make major changes in how we deliver services to customers, even how we recognize revenue in the future or, or, or how we count on certain revenue to drive the growth of our business and um, consider very different metrics on how and what success looks like. I had people around the room, around the table, uh, just thinking it was absolutely crazy and, and perhaps too soon. Okay. Uh, too, too, too early for us to, to make those leaps. And so <clears throat> I'll share a story with you if you want. You may recall this. It's, um, it's July of 2018. I mean, we're talking literally three, three years ago to the day almost. I'm sitting in Las Vegas at the Microsoft Worldwide Partner Conference called Inspire, and I just got done hearing a keynote by Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft. And uh, I remember walking out of the keynote and I was deflated. I really felt like, because we built our business around Microsoft and everything Microsoft was doing, that um, they did not necessarily have the future in mind um, and that they m may have actually been, uh, quite frankly, following, not leading, not innovating. And that really scared me. I was, I was extremely nervous about that. And I remember jumping on a conference call with two of our guys who were in New York City at the AWS Summit. Okay. Amazon Web Services had hosted a, uh, a pretty big conference to talk about the newest and the latest technologies that were to come from AWS and, um, and where they were going as a company. I jumped on the phone with these two guys, and they are... They're having the exact opposite reaction inside them that Fired I was up. having sitting in Las Vegas. Okay. And they were so pumped with where AWS was going and what they were doing. The downside was we had very little expertise in AWS and we did not know uh, how to ultimately get there. So <laughs> we, were, uh, we, were so, we were so invested in Microsoft that we didn't know how we were gonna ever be able to pivot to AWS. Um, Amazon Web Services, for those that don't know, is a very complex architecture. Um, and one of the first steps that we knew we needed to take after I came back to Rochester um, and, and my, my team came back to Rochester and we started to plan for 2019 and beyond was we knew we needed to skill up. Okay. And so uh, the leadership team and I, we all came together with, um, it was about 15 employees, and we built a new strategy map to pivot the business. And Having uh, the leadership team and our employees really bought into the fact that this was the future uh, was a really important part of that success. There was, there was never going to be an opportunity for success with me walking into a room and just saying to everybody, this is what we're doing. I needed everybody else to say that. Get that buy-in. Yeah, okay. for sure. And that was really important. And we did that. Uh, and I remember being literally in this building in December of 2018. We had just moved here. And we presented this brand new strategy map called TS20, TS, uh, Transformation Strategy 2.0 to everybody. And it was our vision for being more customer obsessed than we ever were before. Um, adopting cloud-based technologies, but doing that first by educating and making sure that we could certify up. And accomplishing goals like becoming an AWS premier partner faster than any other company had ever done it in AWS's history. I mean, these were major things that we rallied behind. And uh, happy to say by the end of 2019, we accomplished those goals. Um, and through the pandemic of 2020 and then 
ultimately into this year, everything has just been up and to the right. The growth of this company, I mean, we'll, we'll have two times the amount of employees we had 12 months ago uh, by the end of this year. We'll, we'll be in this position where this company will be recognized by AWS in a way that maybe less than 10 companies in the world are recognized. Um, we have customers today in over 40 states um, and in two countries. We have employees in five time zones. Uh, you know, these are things that we never could have done if somebody just got in front of a room and said, this is where we're going, this is what we're doing. Right. It really needed to be bought in holistically by the organization and, and that was the best approach to moving forward. I think the, 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 the neat piece when you take a look and unpack a little bit of the story here was not only the vision regarding where you wanted to go, but it was the lean-in with the team, right? Yeah. And when I do say the buy-in from the team, it wasn't from everybody, No, right? it wasn't. You know, I think we can talk a little bit in a minute on some of the pushback initially you yeah. got from the big picture. Um, I'd love to get your perspective, too, about going through some initial growth, growing, going through some initial growing pains. I think everybody has growing pains, right? Yep. Um, and some folks that helped the initial start that weren't there when you reach premier status with AWS. I think it's, a, it's an interesting story for you to tell because I think yeah. you lost some really critical generals in the journey. Uh, yeah. Would you share a little bit about that too? Totally, Andrew? totally. And you know, I mentioned this a little bit earlier around how as you mature as a leader, one of the things you have to be comfortable with is people who helped you along the way, uh, breaking off and going off on their own and doing their own thing. And um, I'm, a, I'm like this firm, I have this firm belief that people who leave you don't necessarily leave you for good. There's, there's always this opportunity for people to come back, for paths to, yep. to, to reconverge. Um, but it's hard because you build relationships with people and you feel this level of indebtedness, at least I do, yeah. um, because people, people put, put it all out on the line for you if, if they're really committed, right? Yep. Um, and we're a company that we leave it all out on the field. We, we don't have anybody in this organization that has like, like an easy job, right? Like we don't have yeah. anybody here that, like, yeah, you know, they can kind of coast. Like it just that doesn't exist here in our business. And as we progress as a company, we're going to keep hitting milestones that we're going to recognize in the present that we're on the backs of many people who may have helped us get there that are no longer part of the organization, and. Um, and I'm extremely grateful for that. Uh, and, I, and I know my team is as well. And I think also it's a big reason the accolades and the recognition um, is maybe less valued here hmm. than maybe it is in other places. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, we reached this, this highest, most coveted level of uh, AWS certification status um, or partnership status or recognition called Premier. We mentioned this earlier. And um, you know, many partners, when they hit the premier level, first of all, there's less than 100 premier partners in the world. Um, there's less than 34 that do what we do in the commercial space as a premier partner. And then if you boil that down to ones that focus on the small to mid-sized business sector, we're like one of five premier partners that really focus in this area. And that's worldwide, it's global. Out of a, a, a partner network of over 10,000, it's just, it's insane. Most partners, they do a huge press release, a huge party, they, they celebrate this in a significant way. Yeah. And we didn't do that. Um, we actually didn't even do a press release on the fact that we hit premier status. What really mattered most to us was, number one, do our employees feel, our current employees, do they feel good about the, where we are as a, as a company? And number two, do our customers see some level of benefit? Mm. And that's where we really focused all of our energy. For those who have left the organization and, um, and certainly were contributors and part of helping us achieve that, um, door is always open. Door is always open for them to come back yeah. and to continue to celebrate with us. And I think the other thing that it's important for people to know is equally, we want to help those who have left our organization and, and maybe have moved on to, to other things. Um, but that's not always the case. Some people, some people don't want that. Some mm. people leave the company and they want that door to be closed and, and that's okay, that's, that's understandable. Um, I, I just choose to run a business though a little bit different in the sense that you know, I, 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 look, I look at it like you know, when, when, an, when an employee joins an organization, it's not a marriage. 
Mm. Sometimes companies like they treat it like it's sure. a marriage or something. It's not a marriage. It's not yeah. matrimony. It's this is a this is an opportunity for people to do really fulfilling work. Hopefully, yep. this is uh, in business. This is an opportunity for people to work with people they like to work with on stuff they like to do, and things change. Yeah, and that's okay. And people, people, I think uh, more and more people are starting to understand that. I think in a in a world where there's this generational shift entering the workforce and continuing to propagate, and I also think that as leaders become more self-aware and they understand that bi- maybe how you run business today in 2021, um, using the same tools that you used in 1998 to run a business, uh, it, it may not work. Sure. No, it makes a lot of sense. So let's let's go down that let's go down that wormhole a little bit with you. Yeah. Because. I'd love to hit the rewind button. Let's go back a year and a half. Yeah, let's do it. Where you challenge the team to say, listen, we need to improve a couple things within the business. Number one, hyper-focused on professional development within the organization. Yep. Let's upskill. Another story I often share with my team at Datto is how you focus on men and women writing their own job racks. Totally. Future, where do they want to go? Exactly. You tell me what you want to do. Show us what the P&L will be and the vision of it. Yep. Implement it. We're going to see how it's going to work into the business. Let's go back though a year and a half. You make the decision, you choose data products, you implement data products. Yep. Right off the bat, I'm, I'm seeing, and again, we're back in the boardroom, mm-hmm. we're taking a look at the big screen, here's what we're noticing, right? Yes. We are gaining more visibility in the work that's being done. We are leveraging automation at a new world that we never thought we could see, which Ever. is then freeing up more time for our team yep. to upskill in other areas. Number three, we're seeing a heightened partner experience for our clients that are being served through Innovative. Tell me a little bit about where that started and where you are now today through sure. the implementation of these products. So Datto was game changer for us. And we looked, when we evaluated products, we looked at um, a, a variety of strategies in order to address two primary goals. The first was uh, get data in and out of a system efficiently that could actually help us make decisions. That was like a huge goal. Yep. Some people are like, well, duh, you, why wouldn't you do that? Well, that was a goal. And we, we wrote that down and we all focused on what's the best set of systems or what's the system that's going to help us do that. And number two, um, we, had a, we actually had an employee sat issue. Our employees were dissatisfied with the prior system that we were using because it was arduous to get time in, to get time... Uh, to get time to make sense around mm. a project or an engagement or a managed services contract. And, um, and that sucked. And that, that was just not good for our business yeah. on a variety of fronts. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain a few of the benefits that we've seen since. But those are the big goals. And so we looked at all these systems. We eat, since we're a system integrator, I even challenged our team to go look at six different systems that we could piece together. Yep. Like, what if we brought in you know, fresh desk and we coupled that with another you know, service management tool and we integrated salesforce.com to it. Like, what would that look like? Best of breed everything, yep. right? Quote, unquote. Um, and it was so blatantly obvious that Datto is the right solution for our type of business, um, largely because of the fact of the investment in the product set and number two, the, the level of support. Uh, those are the two things we were banking on when, we, when I signed the, the, the proposal to move forward and, and our team committed to implementing these tools. And so we did a phase implementation. It was actually a fairly quick implementation uh, with some migration of data, but we kept a lot of data in a data warehouse outside of data, which was a good move. And immediately after we went live, employees told us how much easier it was to get time in and get information out of the system around their engagements. We've since integrated other tools like Slack. So uh, I don't know how many other data customers do this, but we use Slack as a collaboration tool. Yep. Um, our employees can uh, can easily, through a bot, enter all their time in through Slack. They don't ever, ever, actually have to ever even log into Datto to Amazing. do that. I mean, it's just super slick. You can yep. do it through your phone. You can do it, through, obviously, through a browser. Um, but employee satisfaction has increased dramatically. The other big benefit that came out of this is we were able to pull information out so much easier okay. and integrate that data uh, with all of these other systems that we do use throughout the business, like our accounting system, uh, like our Salesforce automation tools, et cetera. And um, we've created these gorgeous dashboards that give us a real insight to the minute on what's happening in the business, whether that's utilization, whether that's impact on revenue, whether that's the, the net promoter score or the CSAT scores that are coming in real time now uh, from our customers as we close tickets or we're asking customers to give us a, a you know, really a, a 
a good lens into what they're feeling or what they're not feeling from a love standpoint. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Uh, so it's been huge for us. Excellent. So let's talk a little bit then on that topic of evolution, because mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things, if, if anyone's really paying attention for the past 20 minutes we've had this conversation, <laughs> is your willingness to go in, lean in and go, you know what, in five years, here's what I'm seeing in the business. Yeah. Here's what I'm seeing in the business and here's how we're going to get there. Yep. A lot of folks can't live into that world, sure. if that makes sense, you know, because I think it, you, you almost hit on the point earlier where we see men and women in today's business world coming in and out. You know, the, I think the most recent statistic we saw, if you're going to keep somebody three, three and a half years, you're doing good. Yeah. Right. You're really so overachieving. True. Yeah. Um, so talk to me a little bit about how you see your business over, say, the next three to five years. Mm -hmm. What do you see the impact for your partners today, your customers? Yeah. And what do you see for the impact for your employees? Because I know that they're going to be hyper-focused on their totally. own professional Without development. But how do you see those worlds coming together? Yeah, the biggest, uh, the biggest things that I'm excited about over the next three to five years are, number one, um, our ability to serve customers globally. That's, okay. a, that's like a real initiative we have right now that we're working toward. And for any business owner or executive who's in a position to scale their business, they know that global expansion is a, uh, it's just this monster. Yeah, it's a tricky, tricky monster to get totally. to, to try to get under. And, and Jeff, I, I don't have any experience in that. That's the other thing. Like I, I have regional experience Correct. at best. National experience has been uh, so eye-opening to me. And now that um, we're starting to travel again and be able to visit customers that are located in different cities and states and, and obviously countries, um, that's exciting. But to scale our processes okay. and to scale the tool sets uh, to be able to support a workforce that is growing, uh, that, that growing quite frankly, not just nationally, but globally, um, that is extremely exciting to me because this year, Innovative will serve a thousand new customers than we did last year. Amazing growth. Incredible growth. Um, next year, we anticipate serving um, another 2,500 new customers wow. beyond what we're serving today. And the goal is not to churn customers. We, we watch customer churn rates and we are so laser focused on any customer need or issue or opportunity that potentially leads a customer to a place that they're dissatisfied because we want customers for life. Uh, and we don't want to do that through contracts. Right. I hate that. I, I, I think everybody does. Why, why do you want to bound yourself to Nobody a wants to date. Everyone wants to get married, right? Exactly. Yep. So damn true. Um, and so I want customers to be able to leave us within 24 hours if, if, if they feel as though we're not meeting those needs. Um, but at the end of the day, I never want to give a customer a reason to do that. And so as we scale this business and we have to now deliver customer experiences consistently so that we can, can support that scale, that's extremely challenging. So you have to bring in people that either have experience doing that um, or other people that are willing to go and try some new things or do some th things different that maybe when we were just a regional player, yeah. we were like, oh, then we got away with that because yep. they were in our backyard. We could literally get in the car and go drive and, and speak to the customer face to face where I can't do that with, a, with, with, with my customer who's in Alaska now. Right. You know, it's just, even with Zoom technology, it's not the same. It's not the same experience. Exactly. So um, those, those scaling opportunities are, are really important to me. Um, the other weird thing that, that I have to, I have to admit um, over the next three to five years that is, um, you know, this is the, one of the biggest things in my career and in my personal life that, uh, that that's a motivator to me is fear. Mm. So I am a person who, um, f fear is this powerful thing. <clears throat> fear has this ability to, uh, if confronted right, um, as, as a headwind, to be turned into a tailwind. Mm. And that's where I have seen so many things in, in my lifetime uh, just completely turn uh, for the better. And uh, if I think about three to five years out and I think about that growth and the things that we need to do as a company to be able to support that growth, you, you can bet your last dollar that fear is the number one thing driving me uh, to make decisions to ultimately address that ultimately get us to, to this place of, um, of success, whatever, whatever we define success as. And when I look at how I process information just individually, like yep. me, myself, and how different that is from you know, somebody else, um, and, and respect the fact that the way I do it is different and the way somebody else does it is different, um, 
that's really, I think, a critical success metric uh, going forward. I also believe, uh, coupled with that, <clears throat> the day that like I come in and like I'm not motivated mm. by that to to go bigger, to to think larger, to to try things that are completely outside our comfort zone. That's probably the day I'm not the right person to lead in a minute. That's probably the day that like I hang up the cleats and say, you know, uh, it's it's probably better that somebody else take it over and, You'll know. and move it forward. I will. I, I, I firmly believe that. I, I've always said the day that I'm done is the day that everybody here tells me, like, gotcha. you okay. got to go. Yep. You know, like, yeah. that's that's the day. Like, I, that, that'll be the day I, I walk out and hopefully leave behind um, uh, some form of legacy that's that's impactful. I, I tell everybody the the biggest litmus test for me when somebody leaves our organization for another career opportunity, the biggest litmus test for me, the one question that I always ask is, you know, is that person better than when they came into Innovative? If the answer is yes, mission complete, man. Like, yeah. same with customers. Are customers better than when they came to us? If the answer is yes, if they're leaving, uh, mission complete. Maybe we didn't do all the things we could have, but we at least helped them move forward, mm. and that's important. It's a great perspective. So one of the big reasons why I was really excited to spend a little bit of time with you today is I felt like your voice can speak to so many different CEOs in the MSP space in their journeys today, from uh, the men and women that are joining us today that are in day one, right? They've, they've come from the moment of being the, the guy or gal who's fixing a computer yeah. to now all of a sudden they've got a, they've got a customer saying, well, what's your service level agreement? Right. Or, or when I have a question on Sunday, who do I call? Is it you or, you know, who exactly handles that, that issue? And they're trying to grow and they're trying to scale. So thinking a little bit about that, that smaller guy, what would be that little nugget of wisdom you'd give to your younger self, 2010, to hearing you're not ready yet, you got five more years. Yeah. What, what's that nugget you're giving to yourself and anybody paying attention today? I, I think about this often because I chase, I chase a version of myself mm. much further in the future. Like that's always who I'm chasing. I don't chase anybody. Like I don't idolize anybody else other than this this version of myself, this better, much better version of myself that's always ahead of me. And uh, the, the, the one thing that I'm reminded by often, because I have, uh, you know, like I, I have big ambition. I, I want to do things that are impactful, is our innate uh, inability to accurately predict what we can accomplish in certain time frames. And I, um, I may be misquoting, but I believe Bill Gates uh, is quoted with saying that, you know, we as humans were notorious for completely underestimating mm. what we can do within a 10-year window. And we completely overestimate what is accomplished within, you know, just a short period of time. And I think that's important that we, whether you believe that or not, that we all take stride in gaining as much perspective as possible. My younger self, yep. I would have called BS on that. I would have mm. said, eh, I'll gain perspective as I live more, or I, I'll learn as I, as I go through more. True, but I would, if I could give myself the advice, I would say, go into those hard decisions. Go into those hard moments where it's, it's uncertain how I'm, I'm gonna come out on the other end. because. Yep. Whether I'm successful or I'm not successful with it, I'm gonna take away so much from that. But the biggest thing I'll take away with from, from any of it is perspective. And perspective, man, you talk to some of the most successful people you've ever met in your life, or if you hear some of the most successful people you ever hear talk, they just, they're, they're grounded with so much perspective. Mm. And uh, I think that's a really important thing that we underestimate. Amazing, I think it all really boils down to we we rush for the wisdom, right? We, do. We, we rush for the wisdom, we rush for the moments. Yeah, we do. And I, I, I wish there could be a CEO Google, right? I know, to, man. To, get, to get the answers, know. To, to know the blind spots, to do. know the places we shouldn't go in the, in the so journey. So true. Um, Justin, thanks so much for joining us today on MSP Insights. Thank you. Datto community, please take a minute. Join us in the Datto community. We'd love to hear more. Justin, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, and Sean. as always, thanks for being a Datto partner. Thanks, brother. Take it easy. Thanks.